All right, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another video. Today's video, we're gonna be working on vertical landscapes. So let's get going. All right, well, these vertical landscapes I have right here don't really fit on the page or on your screen right now because they're very, very tall. So if I put them like this, um, it's gonna be really hard to see. So I might try to turn your screen for you and then I'll turn it right back. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. So anyways, um, so here I have two examples, uh, fictional, non-fictional. Now, what I'm gonna do is I wanna explain how these projects work. Uh, so when it comes to vertical landscapes, um, we don't normally think of looking at landscapes in that manner. We normally are looking at landscapes in a horizontal way. So when it comes to like screensavers or wallpapers, or if you're thinking of like a photograph, you normally think of like landscapes to be left to right, basically, right? But when it comes to vertical landscapes, you don't normally think of how to position the land when you're drawing. You don't really think about um, how vertical landscapes normally work. Now, where do they come from? Vertical landscapes are normally done when you look at like ancient scrolls, or if you look at classic Japanese paintings, uh, you'll normally see landscapes to be in that vertical format because it's a scroll. And normally when their words are up and down, it was more easier to place. And when scrolls, they normally hung in a vertical format. So um, what I'm gonna do is explain how this project is gonna work. You're gonna need a piece of paper, a ruler, and something to draw with. And as always, coloring is optional, unless we're doing like ice cream or something. Anyways, uh, so what I just did is that I made my paper to look like a vertical landscape. And how I did that was I put two inches of a gap on each side and an inch gap on uh, the top and the bottom. And it was able to give me somewhat of a vertical landscape, just like how we have on these larger ones. If we were back in school, we'd obviously have vertical paper just like how we have over here. But um, we're gonna go from there. So what you're gonna need is a, a ruler to make them straight. And then I kind of like freehanded it. That's why it looks like that. But um, we're gonna go from there. So when it comes to vertical landscape drawing, you wanna start from the bottom and then work your way up. We're normally used to drawing from top to bottom. That way we don't like smudge with like our palm or like our hand or wrist. But when it comes to vertical landscape, it's a lot easier to start from the bottom and go our way up. The reason why is because in the bottom, this is called the foreground. Stuff that's closer to you and basically the stuff that's in front of you. And then we have the midground. And then we have the background. So you want to make sure we label them as such. You don't have to label your paper. This is just to show you guys. And then we'll go from there. I'm going to do this in marker. And if I mess up, it's okay. The, reason we use, the only reason why I'm doing a marker is so it turns out better on camera. So when I'm doing a, a, a landscape, uh, you can either do a cityscape with like buildings and cities, or you could do like a more rural landscape, like with like forest and stuff. I'm going to go this direction instead of a cityscape. Um, you can do buildings, but it kind of gets lost. But um, maybe I'll do both. I don't know. <laughs> maybe I'll just do one. We'll see how much time we have. So let's start off with the foreground. The foreground, I'm going to add maybe a couple bushes here and there. So maybe I'll do two bushes here. Maybe I'll do a foreground tree. So let's just add a tree somewhere. Just like so. And then I'm gonna make sure the tree is a little more detailed than that. Here and there. And then the top of the tree is kind of more of a pile. There we go. Maybe some more branches here. There you go, to emphasize it's a tree. Alright. There we go. Tree. Next to emphasize the leaves. All right, there is my tree, and here's my bush. All right, so now what we're gonna do is more stuff on the midground. But before we do that, let's divide the section up with more of a horizon line. So if you don't know what a horizon line is, it's basically where your eye meets the sky. But in our case, uh, I like to add hills first. Just gonna put random hills here and there. Maybe more opposite maybe one more and then I'm gonna do water 
and we'll go from there. So what I just did is that I kind of created hills to divide the sections up, just like how I did on this one over here. And what I'm going to do is maybe add a couple paths here and there. Maybe this path gets a little smaller. It's wider as you go closer. Maybe I'll add flatland over here so that way you can see where the path kind of ended up. Kind of like that. Kind of like continues on. Uh, maybe on this section over here, I can add a little bit more of some scenery. Maybe it pushes over here, bushes right here, a bush right there, and then maybe another bush right here. And then maybe I can add a tree in the distance. So as you go further away, if you don't remember, trees get smaller. So might as well draw a smaller tree right there. Yeah, smaller tree. Another, it's gonna get smaller. Some more trees here, maybe a group of trees. That'd be kind of cool. There's some bushes beside this tree, maybe. There you go. And then maybe some. Let's see, maybe I can put a house on here. That'd be kind of cool. Stack. I don't want to draw the smoke. <laughs> um, okay, so this is going to be water. So I'm going to represent it with water. Just like this. Alright, so now we're going to end up with the foreground, uh, the background. So I'm going to add more wavy hills here. Maybe some serious mountains in the back. Maybe more slight waves here. And then some clouds to end it off. All right, windy clouds. I have to make the bottoms of the clouds flat to resemble the wind. Okay, so basically my uh, vertical landscape is done. So now what you can see is that stuff that are in the foreground is really close up to you. So that way everything's really nice and big. So the tree is big, the bushes are big, and then the pathway is really wide in the beginning and it gets smaller until it gets to a new uh, area and then it gets really small too. Um, if I really wanted to, I could add more paths here, maybe. So I'm gonna make sure I go really thin. Oh gosh, that's really hard. There you go. <laughs> maybe I'll add another path over here. It's kind of zigzagging back this way. And it doesn't have to add, uh, connect. The paths don't have to connect because it's a hill. And then I think I'm done. Maybe I can add more trees here. Let's add like uh, these kind of trees. Pine trees. I don't know why I forgot the names of the tree for a sec. Pine trees are always nice to draw in the distance. Alright. Let's draw a couple more here and there. Alright, so my vertical landscape is almost all done. Do I have time to color? Let's take a look. Alright, we do have time to color. Okay, I guess we can color a little bit. Um, I'm going to do a type of coloring where um, it's kind of like... Kind of like... Um, uh, let's get my markers real quick. We're kind of just like emphasizing where the color is. So you'll see what I mean when I'm, what I'm about to do. is just like this. So I'm going to choose my blue first. And I'm going to emphasize where the blue would be. So notice how I'm not coloring it entirely. I'm just kind of like letting you understand where the color is. So the blue. I mean, if you want to outline it, go ahead. Uh, is there any more blue? No. All right. I do have a couple greens here, which is great because then I can emphasize different types of greens. And then I can do a different motion. So instead of doing straight lines, I can probably curve or kind of mimic leaves going like this. A bunch of V's, I guess. That looks kind of cool. Alright, so these ones maybe curl like this. These ones curl like this. And then maybe for the bushes, maybe uh, a darker green. Is this green? Yeah, these are like darker green. A couple of these. Let's go do zigzags. Maybe for the foreground tree, I can just do more of what I was doing, like the loops. Kind of like the scale type of color. There you go. 
for the path. I shall choose yellow. A couple paths here. And again, when coloring like this kind of style, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is a style of coloring that I like to use sometimes when I'm in a rush. All right, so there is one last green I got. This is dark green. I'm gonna use it for the pine trees in the back. Wow, that looks really good. All right, let's add some browns here and there. Woo. Single lines, double line, and triple line. There we go. Maybe this one I'll add a couple bark lines. Here we go, like that. There we go. Looks like bark. All right. Maybe a couple browns on the pine trees in the back. Maybe a couple more lines there. All right, we're almost done. Um, I don't want to use marker anymore. I'm gonna emphasize the rest with crayon. Maybe I'll use one more gray or one more marker with the mountain. But we'll go from there, just for that mountain. All right, I want to do the rest in crayon. So here we go. All right. That looks good. And notice how I'm doing a different type of green for each type of hill to separate it even more. And if I really want to, I guess I could take brown crayon and emphasize the tree more. And I can actually take a green. Wow, I'm doing way too much work right now. Uh, I get carried away once in a while, guys. And to emphasize the tree, I can add it with more green of a crayon. Oh, this is looking really good. Um, to emphasize the light, maybe I will choose a yellow to do the tops of the trees a little bit. Emphasize light. There we go. All right. <laughs> I really don't want to do this right now, but I kind of want to because my brain wants to make it look better. Uh, I do want to add a little bit more blue on the sky with a crayon. And then my brain wants to add more of this kind of like different type of blue in the water so I'll just do that right now <laughs> all right with the rest of the mountain maybe a little bit of the gray here and there add maybe a little bit more brown and then last but not least uh, kind of like a faded green there we go wow this is starting to look real good I'm surprised I'll just do this, this whole hill, this kind of green. Oh, put some, <laughs> I put some water in the, uh, in the hill right there. Okay, um, I'm gonna call it done because I don't want to do too much. But anyways, that's a vertical landscape to my best of my ability at the moment, and uh, I'm liking the way it turned out. It looks really good. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson, and I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.